Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Are you a game master or dungeon master like myself that is constantly having trouble finding the right map? Can leave you sometimes like this. Yeah, you want to go search the cellar? I, yeah, got a map for that. Sure. Or perhaps even this. I've already been searching for three gods forsaken hours. I quit. My board and Terry has. I quit. And I have the perfect solution for you. And that solution is the new program called Dungeon Alchemist in conjunction with a Roll20 Pro account and the API script that Roll20 provides you. Let me show you. All right, so without further ado, we'll jump right in. Uh, I'm on my Steam right now. You will have to get this program off of Steam for $45. It just released on the 31st of March this year. Uh, very intuitive, very amazing program. I highly recommend it. I've only spent 20 hours in the actual program itself, and it saved me more than twice that in-game already. Okay, so you got Dungeon Alchemist off of Steam. That's all downloaded. Good to go. We're now in Roll20.net. You will need a pro subscription, as I mentioned previously, for this to work. Um, and one more thing we're going to have to do before we get our map in there is go into the actual settings of the game itself. So we're going to add an API script that Dungeon Alchemist already has available for us. Just got to add it. So go to the settings, API scripts here, um, drop down menu, and just start typing Dungeon Alchemist, but it'll pop right up. Dungeon Alchemist importer, add script, let it do its thing and we're good to go. So let's go back into our game and launch it here. The first thing you're gonna wanna do once you have your uh, new map opened up here um, is go up to the top left and ensure that the map layer is set to the map and background layer. Then you're gonna go up to the page toolbar here at the top, uh, edit the page settings for the page you wanna get your map on, go to the dynamic lighting, switch that on and save. Now it's not essential to do these two steps before you get your map. I just find it saves some time, easier, get it out of the way, don't have to think about it. So then we just gotta open our Dungeon Alchemist program and make our map. So when you create a new map or when you first download a program, this is what you're gonna see. Now we don't need to do any forest or grasslands, we're just gonna do the dark parchment, just a simple cellar. Um, I can go in more in depth with this program, its features, what it does, if anybody would like to see that. Uh, I've experimented with it extensively and it's quite a bit of fun. Um, it basically uses AI to create and fill, populate rooms, things for you. It's, it saves more time than I can even articulate here. So let me show you. Uh, mansion, we're just going to do a cellar. They have a cellar preset since we just need a little one for that cheeky rogue to check out. So. Uh, it's a little too fancy for uh, my setting uh, where we currently are so I'm just gonna quickly add some uh, wooden floors instead maybe get rid of some of these columns and uh, see how that looks in this kind of view I'd say it looks pretty good okay get rid of the door we don't want him going anywhere just go back up to the tavern there we go I'd say that's uh, done so file we're gonna export that up here now this supports different programs such as Fantasy Grounds and Universal VTT. I only use Roll20, stick with that. Um, perspective, we got Perspective, Limited Perspective, and Orthographic. Um, I usually just do Perspective 3D Walls. My players love it, it adds a whole new sense of depth to each and every map you create. Um, you can do the grid through this or just let Roll20 do it. I just let Roll20 do it. And we're going to export. Uh, let's call this the test map. And we'll go ahead and save it there. And export complete. Now we're going to head over to roll 20 and just quickly get it in there. All right, back on our roll 20. Um, we have our map set to the map and background layer. And we have our lighting turned on in the settings of our page here. Um, all we have to do is open up the file location that Dungeon Alchemist is saving and exporting our files to. Find the JPG file you want. So for ours, it's the test map. Drag it over. Let it do its thing. It doesn't take too long in my experience here, even on the larger, more intensive maps. Um, once it's in there, don't do anything. We're going to open up the file location again and go into the text document that should have the same name. This automatically is created for you when you export a map using Dungeon Alchemist. Uh, open that up, control A, or just highlight it all, copy that, and paste it directly into the text box, or the text uh, chat room, whatever, in Roll20, and let it do its thing. It should say, successfully imported map data. 
So it repositioned itself, um, as we can see in roll 20 here. There we go. It's set to the right dimensions for the grid. If you look at the dynamic lighting layer, that's all handled for you. So that's all set. Um, you'll notice that there's the uh, circles showing that those are light sources since uh, you had some lanterns automatically built in on the map. So there we go, that easy. Thank you so much for watching this video. If I can even help one fellow dungeon master, game master, save some time doing this job we all love to do, then my mission is accomplished. And uh, please check out Dungeon Alchemist Roll20. I'll have the links down below in the description. Dungeon Alchemist has a great new Discord that they're very active in. Um, I post in there frequently and it's a great place to get inspiration tips. If anybody would like to see any future content on uh, Dungeon Alchemist or Roll20 and more in-depth looks at what the uh, programs have to offer, I'd be more than willing to oblige or answer any questions you guys leave in the comments below. So thank you. Give the like button a boof if you found this helpful or if you want to help a bruv out. And with that, stay frosty, my friends.